Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> That's how we're going to start this. Um, hey, I'm Chris Pratt from Eurogamer. It's my pleasure to introduce you to this developer session for a Total War Saga, Thrones of Britannia. I think I got the full title right. Yes, good. Um, we're going to be watching something kind of cool here, actually. We've got a siege battle between Lionheart over there and Jackie Fish, uh, and they're going, to be, they're going to be playing pretty intensely, I imagine. They're going to have the game faces on, which means we could do with a bit of useful commentary to go along with that siege battle. So we have... Uh, Wheels here. <laughs> uh, from Creative Assembly, who is going to be uh, sort of helping us through the commentary along with uh, Craig Kirby. And yes, they're going to be telling you exactly what's going good. on. Um, I should also point out at the end of this session, I think we're hoping there's going to be about 10, 15 minutes for this. Uh, there's going to be a QA and a um, about uh, Friends of Britannia. They're not going to say anything about Free Kingdoms. Like, you could try asking, I don't think that's going to work. Um, and yes, so we'll be back up right at the end for that, about 10, 15 minutes, starting your questions now, if you like. And without further ado, I guess I'll hand over to, to these guys for our siege battle. Thanks a lot. Give a big round of applause for Creative Assembly, Lion Heart, and Jackie Dish. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Welcome. Um, we are here to show you Friends of Britannia, Total War Saga, coming out on the 3rd of May. Um, and I'm joined by Craig as well. Craig, do you want to, do you want to talk a little bit about yourself? Who are you? Yeah, hi. Why have you come um, here? I'm Craig. I'm not sure why I'm here. <laughs> but uh, I'm a designer on this game. This is uh, a little pet project of ours. It's all something we're really passionate about. Um, almost finished it now. And as you say, it's coming out 3rd of May. So this is actually probably my first look at this siege battle. I've not cool. played on this map yet, so I'm pretty excited to see this It's one. an exclusive for everyone. Guys. Yes. I'm Wills. Yep. Um, I am going to be your host for this, for this afternoon. Uh, so, Friends of Britannia is set in 878 AD in the British Isles. Mm -hmm. um, and if we jump into the game now, we can see a lovely look at some of the uh, vistas that we're going to have under us. So, we're, we're doing a, a settlement battle here. Large siege of this kind of strange looking settlement because we're going to have a massive river running through, which is actually going to split us halfway. Um, which means that if you dedicate one half of your army to that uh, side of the battlefield, they are dedicated, Craig. Yeah. They aren't going anywhere else. Um, so Jackie Fish is going to be playing as uh, some horrible Viking invaders trying to take this settlement for themselves. And Lionheart, the brave men of Wessex, are going to be defending. There's the flag floating up there. Uh, it's 870 AD. The, the Viking invasions have happened now. Yep. And they're just part of England now. You're just going to have to deal with that. Yep. Which they're just means, friends, right? Yeah, which means there's a lot of uh, cultural clashes going mm -hmm. on on the campaign map. Mm -hmm. And um, for anyone who doesn't know Total War, it's a mix of turn based campaign and real time battles. And we're going to be looking at the real time battles now. Yes. So, let's whack the UI on, see what's hanging up. So, we, as we said, we've got Wessex are. Um, in control of this settlement here. Lining up on the walls, you can see that every single unit has about 100 men in there, ready to, to rain some death on everyone coming <laughs> at them. And we've got some huge siege towers coming in as well. And you'll see here that the, uh, the East Engel Vikings, uh, East Anglia in modern day terms, are going to be uh, trying to avoid arrow fire as they walk up to the walls. And the guys are just setting up their armies now. And it looks like they're putting most of their forces on this side of the battlefield. Mm -hmm. And I'm guessing that they're, they're a bit daunted by the fact <laughs> that they don't want to have their entire army split off from the rest of it. Yeah. So tell me through, uh, talk me through this settlement, Craig. Yeah, so one of the things we've tried to do in this game is we've made the settlements a bit larger in size. There's less hard collision, which means there's more space to maneuver your armies. So hoping to see them doing a bit of inner city fighting now falling back, uh, hopefully the front line will fall, rather than everyone dying at the gates, which means we can see some people going through the streets, the cavalry will get a bit of flanking action in there. Um, we've also tried to make the game look a bit more green than the previous games, so we've got some nice vibrant colour in here, uh, all handcrafted, each settlement map. So, they're going to have multiple mm -hmm. uh, points to defend. You can see here they've got at least three gates. There's one over here, one over here on this sort mm -hmm. of more uh, westerly side and one over here in the northern side of the settlement as well. Yes. It looks like, from the, from the face of things, we're definitely going to get <laughs> an all-out assault from one well, point from East Angle. not exactly. If you look at the mini-map, and it feels a bit weird because those guys can hear us, but there's a cheeky little flank coming in on the side there somewhere. Just a cheeky little one. Just a cheeky just little cheeky, one. One unit. Three guys here just to push it along, which well, is nice of them. Yeah. <laughs> it's good of them to do all the hard labour whilst everyone well, else just sits Vikings, in the right, tower. They're pretty strong. Well, it looks, it, looks, it looks pretty light, right? That looks yeah, pretty movable. Yeah, they'll be fine. Them. Don't worry about it. So we're going to let them kick off the battle now if they're ready yep. to go. Are you ready to go, guys? Yep. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bit yeah. of trash talk from you guys as well at some point, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Smells when like I'm burnt fish already. Oh, <laughs> me. Who do you think is going to win? Well, obviously, Wessex have the have the advantage here because they are defending the settlement, mm-hmm. and that means that they have the advantage of having the big walls that they can hide behind. Whilst the Vikings are going to have to have that uphill struggle mm-hmm. of getting involved. Um, so I'm probably going to put the odds in the favour of uh, of the men of Wessex. What okay. do you think, Craig? Well, I think that if the Vikings are quick to get to the walls and they don't take too much damage approaching them, they could have a pretty good chance here. As you can see, the battle's immediately underway, yep. and those rams just coming straight out of the forest. So we've got a battering ram here, which yep. will take down the gates, and they're already taking fire from the towers that we have on the wall. Mm-hmm. Uh, and those projectiles can hit pretty hard if they hit their targets, so they're going to have to keep those shields up and make sure that they're blocking as many of them as they can. But they're going to start moving this yep. uh, battering ram now. We can see the towers coming in on the other side as well, that sneaky little uh, defense force. These guys have actually elected to push it as a group, which is nice of them. <laughs> Well, uh, you're saying three men's not good enough. Well, I mean, you know, <laughs> there's only so much you can do with three men. I, I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna leave that one to your imagination. We've yep. got a few people men uh, just sort of sitting in the uh, in the lower echelon of the field, waiting to get involved. And we can see some flaming arrows now yep. being pushed right up into the defenses of the men of Wessex. So, talk me through these units. We'll get the unit cards up here now. We've got some armored archers over here, and some. Uh, well, another unit of armored archers. What, what, <laughs> what is the, uh, the purpose of these guys right here? Yeah, so the archers in this game, um, you generally don't want to be firing them straight into the front of the opposing units. The shields in this game are very effective. So they'd be better utilized coming around the flank, maybe saving their ammunition right now. It could just be a scare tactic to try and maybe get him out of position right now. Uh, I don't think they're going to do a lot of damage. But if they can maybe get around the back of these units whilst they're engaging the melee, you could see some pretty serious losses from the English. So Lionheart did have some of his own uh, archers standing on the walls yep. there, but he's, he's pulled them back so that yep. his melee forces can move up and start defending that point. Because as you can see, that siege tower is getting awful close. And right over on the other side of the wall there, we can see that one is just about to engage, which means we're going to get a mm-hmm. massive clash here. But holding the wall with some Danelaw mailed swordsmen uh, in the uh, in the tower, and they're going to be coming up against this unit of mailed fanes. Is this a, is this a head-on head clash? Is this going to be one-sided? Uh, it's going to be pretty slow. I think the English might be able to hold this. But if you look further along the wall, you see there's the uh, the little cheeky flank being pushed by three men. Is also just at the walls now. This and that's a, a unit of berserkers over here. And it's completely unguarded as well. In. And that's the reason that there weren't that many people pushing the tower. This yep. is a slightly smaller unit. You can see there's only 60 of them, but these guys hit hard. Oh, they will hit very hard. And if they can get around the back of these units, it's going to be pretty devastating. So we've got a capture point over here that yep. um, both of the players are going to have to be wary of because this is going to uh, tick down this defender's from Rainy Victory mm-hmm. Point here. And if they run out, then they're going to have massive debuffs across the field. Oh, if he runs out, the game's over. Well, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, defenders lose if they lose their victory point. So they're going to have to keep an eye on that. There are some units kind of holding the middle of the settlement right now. I think they'll be able to hold off the berserkers, but the flanks of these units are pretty exposed. So I have to say, Lionheart has to be careful here because he's mm-hmm. going to get a little bit of friendly fire if he keeps firing in those archers. It seems like he was listening, though, because they're running away now. <laughs> um, I get the impression they're hearing, like... <laughs> Every time you mention a tactic, it changes. I know, right? It's funny, uh, isn't it? <laughs> Jackie Fish has broken through the gate now. Yep. Uh, and he's just holding that. He's just shouting Anglian at champions. the gate right now. Yeah, they're just having a little, a little shout off. It's a bit scary. You don't want to go in, right? I mean, that is just one unit coming up against two waves here. Yeah, and maybe don't spearmen. go through there. The spearmen are going to be quite good at holding the line. They're going to be good at holding the line, but at some point they might have to hold their flanks as well. They're also going to be good at just running forward, apparently. (laughs) (laughs) They're going to hold that hill, and obviously in Total War you are going to have a height advantage, um, which is is quite important, because if you're fighting uphill, it's going to tire you out, and Mm. you've got the the reach advantage of being higher than your enemy. But right now, because these units are actually managing to break through the English line, these Dane Law mailed swordsmen, and it looks like they're, they're slightly losing um, their engagement. They've just gone into combat even now. Mm-hmm. Now, because these guys are flanked, they're going to take a little bit of a hit from that to their uh, morale. Oh, but they're course. so much better units, I can't see them losing this fight, really. Provided that they get some support from their allies, although it does look like well, yeah, it they're just being like left by themselves. just facing them the wrong way, <laughs> which is good of him. That was, that was a nice little thing for him to do there. What I would have liked to see even. if he sent a few extra units up those towers, because once they're docked on the walls, other people can use them. But it looks like he's not really utilizing that. Nice. And nice, I think nice big there this is actually used. the distraction force and not the main assault. Because if you look at the rest of the settlement, all of the rest of his armies on the other side of it. 
Well, this is quite a large force now coming in. Mm -hmm. He's sent in that unit of Berserkers there, has also been joined by these Anglian champions. Yep. These guys have been chevroned up, which means they're a little bit of a higher rank. Uh, they're taking fire from some of them, but they are going to start capturing these towers. How important is that going to be for them? Well, once the towers are taken out, they're going to be destroyed, which means they'll no longer be taking arrow fire from the side, so they'll be able to go and support their units. Well, um, it's fine, because this is really well defended <laughs> over here. You can see that these guys have, have put up a good fight. Yep. Now, these are um, some Axe Infantry, which means they're going to be start uh, destroying the settlement around them. Yeah, so the Axe units tend to have the Raider trait, which means they just like burn infants to the ground. They're the, the Vikings you'd expect Vikings to be. Uh, if they're left to themselves, this settlement is going to be on fire. So there's a nice big juicy flank here for these mm -hmm. Select Sphere Spearmen. It looks like the... Um, uh, Lionheart is just going to move them over to try and hold the line because if he does yeah. get flanked, that's going to be a big old hit on him. But these guys are going to get taken out by these Anglian champions, surely. It would have been nice if that charge hit before the unit got into position and got some bracing off, but uh, it could hold. This is quite a large force coming in now. You can see that Jackie Fish has moved up the rest of his troops. Still got a few skirmishes here with those armored archers, and yep. he's going to be uh, pelting them with fire whenever he wants to. You can see on the previous siege tower, he's now deciding to send his units up to reinforce, which is nice. Now we'll we die. have got another um, little uh, warband coming in, some Royal Fanes who are quite elite sword infantry. They're going to come in and uh, try and try and pull off a Yeah, this maneuver. doesn't look good for East Engel, although now that I'm saying this, he might notice, but <laughs> <laughs> he's about to get Curse a of the serious, commentator. Curse of the commentator, right? Serious charge coming in from the side here, and it doesn't look like he's doing anything to defend it. Well, this is quite a tricky position that he's put himself in because he's also got those javelin men there. Does he want to hold back and just try and do as much uh, skirmishing as he can? Because it's, it's forcing this unit of Anglian champions to not get involved in this conflict, which means he can hold that line just a little bit longer. They are starting to waver, though. They are starting to waver. What I'd like to see is those javelins trying to just sneak through that gap between the units, maybe get off a few javelins into the back of the units that still stand on the walls because they'll take out those English pretty damn quick. You can see these huge arcs of fire coming in from these archers mm -hmm. now. They're going to try and um, pepper as many of those units as they can whilst they send in the rest of the force. We've got more men moving They're up probably heavy peppering their down. own units at that angle, though. <laughs> <laughs> We've also got uh, the forces coming in now from that flanking maneuver. Yep. It looks like they're going to try and take out this unit of Anglian champions. They yeah, are they're not severely long for this world. outnumbered. But they're still cheering, which is good. Right, let's move over to the other side of the battlefield where it's going a little bit better for East Angle. It looks like these two units are routing. However, they've sent in some reinforcements now. Yeah. These select field spearmen. Now, they're, they're not necessarily the best unit for, uh, for going not. up against berserkers. <laughs> but, you know, you've got to do what you can yes. with what you have. At the same time, this was always just a distraction. This was never the main army. It's just here to tie up a few units with some of these cheap ones. I wouldn't expect the Vikings to commit any more to this, really, than they have. Bear in mind that they do have some more Danelaw Huskars coming up. They this, do have uh, some Danelaw Huskars, but they are seriously outnumbered. Like, I'd rather just pull out of this stage and go reinforce the main battle. Royal Fanes right. have completely given up. They're well, running off. It's a tiring day, you know. They fought battle for eight they minutes. They look more upset than tired, <laughs> if anything. They're just like, oh, God. Oh. Not this again. <laughs> if we just went painted this. those walls, and now they're destroyed and on fire. Now, I'm not... Feeling very good about the uh, the chances of Lionheart anymore. He looks like he's taken a lot of losses, although he does have this cavalry unit here. The cavalry mm -hmm. are going to be very, very, uh, very useful for him because it means that he has a little bit more maneuverability. Yes. It means that he can move around the battlefield at his leisure and pick off the weaker targets. Yeah, and right now it does look like there's a lot of isolated Viking units. Speaking this is what of I mean. which, <laughs> he's not really charge. supporting his flanking units, so they're just getting picked off here. Um, I don't think this is going to work out very well. Now, this is the almost turning into the main conflict right on the distraction force. These guys are just holding their line now. Well, if you look right now, it's two units facing off against, what, five units? And yet they're still... I mean, they are out of control at the moment. They're berserkers. <laughs> they right? are out of control. They're about to pull their T-shirts off and go full ham. They ha and they've captured the gates. So that's good. So let's look at the gates here. They've yep. only got one unit here defending, and mm -hmm. it looks like... They've put themselves in a shield castle. So tell me through the shield castle. Yeah, so the shield castle is going to make them very hard to breach from that angle, especially with the uphill advantage. As you can see, those guys are just kind of ineffectively stabbing. Uh, that one spearman charged forward and died, so that wasn't a very good plan. <laughs> but right now, I think the Vikings want to get a unit behind them, maybe take out those guys, and it can probably do it. Well, Looks like that's probably exactly yeah, what it's going to do. Bear in mind, if we just pop this on, we do have quite a large force of East Engel coming up from this side yep. now. It looks like Lionheart's given up on this part of the walls, uh, which seems like a bit of a good idea. Now, does he mm -hmm. set up any uh, defensive barricade across the town? Is that, is that going to give him a little bit of an advantage here as he, as he pulls back? I think right now I'd actually go on the offence as Wessex. It looks like he's got a bit of a numerical advantage. If you look at the balance of the power at the top, 
Uh, it's swinging strongly in favour of the English, so I'd uh, go all out of France. That's actually in favour of, uh, of Jackie Fish. Because, oh, is it? Yeah, he's in yellow. <laughs> uh, and you can see in red there, Lionheart with about 20%. I'd still of the say bar. the English are winning this battle right now. What makes you say that? Well, it might be to do with him playing on my Steam account, so I'm biased. <laughs> but. Um, <laughs> I think with this, a this good is a, solid a live flag. picture of the English winning the battle. <laughs> there's just a lot so of icons in there. Look, like, there's a little bit of blue. There's a little bit of blue, a little bit of yeah. blue. But there's also a lot of blue right here, which is uh, taking yes. out the rest of the units. I've yeah, managed it does to look uh, like he's managed to get some reinforcements onto that distraction tactic. <laughs> um, the main force is currently not engaged, though. They're kind of just standing around on the walls. Looks like he's got some skirmishes that he's pulled mm -hmm. out, some court axemen over here. Yep. Um, is, that, is that cool or cool? Because I'm going to call them cool. Because, cool, I think they're cool axemen. Which is ironic, because they're well, shooting Jack's fire Well, Jack's not here arrows. to correct me, so they're cool axemen. Good. Right, yep. now, East Angle have pushed in another yeah. reinforcement And there you go, there's the, the flank I mentioned. So that is it. They'll that be able to tidily... That is going to crush that shield castle. You can oh, see they're completely yeah. routed. They're trying to get out of the gate, but they are just completely being crushed by Vikings, yep. which means that this is not looking good for Lionheart. He's got a lot of forces over here now that he, he needs to try and regroup. Very scattered across the board. If we go into the tactical map, you can see that he's got all of his force scattered across different paths, mm -hmm. whereas East Enger are in these nice, compressed spaces. He's got most of his force here, a few little bits here, and two little forces here, just in three nice... Nice little tight units that are working together. And I think yeah. that's where it's, where it's gone wrong for, for Lionheart. Yeah, it's not looking particularly good for them. But they're still like, other than the main force at the gate, they're fairly small groups. They can be isolated and picked off, but they're going to need to get some reinforcements fast. It's not looking great. Well, um, I, I hope nobody lived here because this has is, this is <laughs> not gone well for them. Large force uh, of Lionheart's forces now coming away. Those Javelin men were not hand-to-hand -hand fighters. No. They were meant to be left back so that they could get some range fire on, but he does have his Royal Fanes yeah. here trying to help. If they had a shield castle in front of them, they might have held. Oh dear, the enemy general has fallen, which means that Lionheart has lost his leader on the battlefield. How much of a big, big, big mistake is that going to be for him in the long run? Uh, I'm going to stand by my previous statement that he's going to win this. <laughs> I'm not sure how, though. <laughs> now, no, it's not looking very good, and in fact, I think there's probably maybe a minute left of this battle before his entire army just breaks. Yeah, Bear in mind that um, the East Angle haven't even had to look at the victory point because they've just slaughtered so many Englishmen. Yeah, and if you look on the minimap right now, there's a lot of white circles. Yeah, they Those are, are retreating units. The whole army's routing. It's a massacre. And that is that. Easy. That is that. What an know. absolute rout. <laughs> a round of applause for our players. A round of applause for Jackie Fish. For Lionheart, who valiantly held for eight minutes. For Lionheart, can we just have a big collective... Aww. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was good. <laughs> so let's let's talk to our to our uh, our, our fighters. We've got the, yeah. the battle results up here. Um, eight hundred and one remaining of a one thousand eight hundred and seventy five. But on the other side, one thousand eight hundred forty five, oh. and only three hundred and fifty two men remaining. How did that go for you, Lionheart? Hurt. That hurt. <laughs> yeah, a lot. Um, his berserkers <laughs> had insane amounts of veterancy. Um, and just chewed through everything mm -hmm. I threw at them to try and slow them down. I was flanking them, uh, but then they, then they went into their uncontrollable rage, couldn't do anything about that. Um, yeah, they just kept on chopping. Yeah, let's just let's, highlight yeah, those guys. Let's have a look at these berserkers. 208 kills, 224 kills, and then let's, let's look at the highest Well, kills one of them for, got for zero kills. There's, there's a 76 on the other side. Well, so, that's not know, bad, 76. They're doing their best. That's they're almost one best. unit. So berserkers <laughs> are going to be a, a big thing. They're a big thing, yeah. Uh, they're an elite tier axe unit. They were left alone and they just got to smash into the flanks of the English. Not going to win that fight. Jackie Fish, what went well for you? It was berserkers, really, <laughs> because I could just throw them into combat and then forget about them because yep. they're just going to their rage. So it meant that I didn't have to do any micro and they could just cut away at the English, which was really nice. With such a large force, there's a lot of things to control, which means that you exactly. need to pick your battles. What mm -hmm. are you paying your most attention to? And I think when you got spread out there, Lionheart, you had so many eggs in different baskets that you just couldn't focus on one little point of the battlefield. Jackie smashed my eggs. He smashed your eggs? <laughs> yeah. He smashed your eggs. <laughs> Oh dear. Oh dear. Um, well, we're going to open up the floor for um, a few questions as yep. well, um, so that we can you know, get an idea for, for how the rest of the game is sitting. And mm -hmm. um, of course, we have our expert here, Craig, uh, from, from the development team, who, yep. can, who can answer any questions that people may have. Um, so if you'd like to ask us a question, yeah. jump up to the microphone, and we're ready to go, I believe. Yeah, I think that's good. I've got a question for you, Craig. What's, what's the well, best? Well, go to the microphone. What's the best king? <laughs> oh. I mean, it's got to be Alfred, right? Um, 
He's a legendary general at the start of the campaign, which means he is just an absolute monster in battles. Uh, I played a campaign as East Engle recently, and I went up against Alfred, and he just slaughtered my army. Like, he is so powerful in combat, you do not He want is to Alfred the Great, him. to be fair. He is Alfred the Great, yes. Uh, so, it's coming out on May 3rd. Um, yep. And this is, this is a slightly older build than, than what we're on now. Yeah, it's um, about a week, two weeks older than we currently have, I think. So uh, this isn't the final product. We've still got some balancing changes that we've made since we made this build. Um, there's a lot more campaign effects, which we didn't see today. But this looks pretty good, pretty stable, so I'm quite happy. Good. It didn't yeah. break. It didn't good, crash, yes. which was the biggest one. <laughs> no. uh, the game's really stable right now, as you saw. It's running really well. Mm -hmm. We've done a lot of performance optimizations for this game, and it's running great, I think. So do we have any questions from the audience of anything that they'd like to know? If we've got any Total War fans, then I'm sure there's a lot of burning questions. But if we've got people um, who are new to the game, feel free to ask us anything that you're not entirely sure on how it works as well. Um, and of course, if you want to play it for yourself, you can run right over to the, to the Sega booth yep. where we have um, quite a few PCs set up so that you can play mm -hmm. through the campaign aspect as well. Yes, and we have uh, a whole bunch of QA guys over there who've played so much more of this game than me. They'll... We locked them in a basement <laughs> with the video game and said, if you don't play this, then you're never coming back out. Yeah, let's stick with that. Yeah. Um, they'll probably hate me for saying this, but do go and ask them questions about the game. They'll probably know. They'll be happy to answer. Yeah. Good stuff. I'm not seeing anyone go up to the microphone. Well, uh, should we have Chris come up to the microphone? Yeah, Maybe to the lectern the and ask a few questions. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, guys. I actually have a couple of questions, if you don't mind. Of course. Yeah. Um, first of all, Creative Assembly returning to historic Total War. How, how do you, does everyone feel about that? Is, it, is this an exciting moment? Have you been waiting to do this for a while? Um, yeah, so it's kind of a strange one for us because definitely to the fans, it's us returning to historical, but uh, alongside Warhammer, we've always been working on historical projects, so we've never really had a period internally where we weren't working on mm. historical, but for me in particular, like, uh, playing Warhammer, I don't really know Warhammer too well, so I never really know, like, how do I beat a dragon? What do I do with these rocket guys? Why have I got guns? For me, this is like this is the perfect sort of combat. I like getting down with my shield balls, uh, just charging in with axemen, that sort of thing. I find a lot of fun. Yeah, fewer dragons, but more Vikings. Yeah, I mean, maybe one or two dragons in this game. <laughs> <laughs> just the Welsh, really, yeah. The Welsh are in the game, yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, as far as I understand, uh, Friends of Britannia is running on a sort of modified version of the Attila engine. Mm -hmm. um, but what, what separates this game? What shows that this game is, you know, a few years later down the line, um, what else does it have? Yeah, so we've made, um, for the battle side, we've done custom maps. Our designers have made all new uh, minor settlement battles, emphasizing the larger open space so you can maneuver and fight inside the minor settlements, which currently in Warhammer, you don't have the minor settlement battle, so that's going to be a big difference. Um, we've also made custom new siege maps. I think there's 15, 16, maybe? One of which, of course, we just saw. Yeah, one of which we just saw. Um, each one of them is designed to be radically different from the previous ones, so no two siege maps should feel particularly the same. On the campaign side, every faction has unique mechanics, every culture has unique mechanics. We've taken a bit of a cue from like Warhammer and especially the DLC, and uh, we're trying to make it feel like every campaign is different. We've also got new victory conditions, new narratives. We've got the Viking invasions, which will change based on what the player does in the campaign. So all of that stuff should give it like a really different feel to the previous games we've done historically. Sure, and so obviously this isn't just Total War Friends of Tanya, it's a Total War saga. Mm -hmm. What, what does that mean, and uh, what, like, is this something that you're going to experiment more with going forwards? Yeah, so for the Saga games, we're going for a much tighter, smaller time frame and like, uh, geographical area than the previous game. So on this one, it's just Britain, whereas on like, our bigger titles, we go for like, the whole of Europe or like, Europe and America and India in uh, Empire. So we're going like, a lot more focused in this one. Uh, we're trying to get more of a sort of character-driven campaign. So your generals are going to be more important to your campaign. Uh, we're going for a lot more narrative in this one. So we're keeping the sandbox of the previous games, but a lot more narrative events, a lot more sort of unique things to that. And we're just experimenting by like changing up the formula and looking at things that we thought, well, we've always done it this way. What if we change it? How does that work? And since it's a bit of a smaller title, we can you know take a few more risks and see what works and what doesn't work. Perfect. Well, brilliant. I, I really enjoyed watching that. And as Speaking as someone that has like, uh, done videos for Eurogamer with like, playing Total War, often with a developer, and then reading the comments criticizing the fact that I've paused a bunch of times and made a bunch of mistakes, <laughs> also very impressed with those two guys over there mm -hmm. for managing to do that in front of a live audience. So uh, yeah, good job, guys. And yeah, as they mentioned, the game is out there on the show floor if you want to go check it out. And uh, I'll just thank you all for 
for attending, and a big thank you to Creative Assembly, Jackie Fish, and Lionheart for giving them a massive round of applause. I think they deserve it. Uh, if you like the... If you like the T-shirts that we're rocking right now, we're also going to be giving those out at the uh, at the back of the crowd as you leave. Mm -hmm. uh, so form an orderly line, and we've got them in all sizes. Yep. And everyone can get a T-shirt, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Everyone gets got a T-shirt. Loads of T-shirts. Loads of T-shirts. You get a T-shirt. You You're get a all here for the T-shirts. Let's face it. Even Twitch gets T-shirts, right? Yes. No. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, Twitch. I've been told they're very comfy, actually. So go get a T-shirt. Cool. Right. Thanks very much. Thank Thanks you very much. much.
Dum 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 d